intention today is to share with you some highlights from a very unique story in the Quran. This is towards the end of Surah Al-Kahf, something we recite every Friday. And that's a sunnah way, the prophetic way of letting us know that there are lessons in the surah that are going to be relevant in our everyday life. And we need to review them and renew them, especially on the day of Friday. And this guidance is going to protect us from all kinds of difficulty. The story itself is very long and if I went into too much detail it would take longer than the allotted time for the khutbah but there are things in particular that I'll try to highlight and I recognize that there are those of you that are listening that may not be familiar with the story so I'll give you some synopsis as we go. This is one of the events in the life of Musa alayhi salam. The chronology of it is not known but it seems it's very much later on after his great missions have been accomplished. The challenge against the Pharaoh is done, the crossing of the water is done. The Israelites are somewhat, they're in the desert now, etc. And it seems it's in that time frame that Allah Azza wa Jal calls him to task. He, he gives him a mission, essentially that he has to go learn something. The first thing I'd like to highlight is Musa alayhi salam's commitment to learning. He says, what I recited in the beginning of this khutbah, he said to his young student, his, you can say his intern, his fata, his young man, in other words, he took an assistant with him. And he says to him, لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبة. I'm going to continue and stay committed to this journey until I reach the place where two oceans meet. Even if it means I have to spend multiple time, year, uh, multiple lifetimes, finding it. He's telling this to his student, and all of this, the purpose of this journey is he's going to learn from someone. So the first thing he's teaching his student is that more than anything else, he himself is a student. And he's teaching his student his own commitment as a student. I don't, it doesn't matter if it takes me multiple lifetimes to find this destination or not because I don't know exactly where it is. I'm just heading in this, in this direction and you're coming along with me. But don't ask me to quit because I'm not going to. I'm that committed to learning. This is Allah's way of also teaching us that the knowledge he's about to learn isn't something trivial. Of course, you know that Musa alayhi salam is the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. He's also the recipient of the largest revelation. The Torah is significantly much bigger in volume than the revelation of the Qur'an. And he's, by, by that definition, he's actually the most knowledgeable of all human beings at the, until that time. He has more knowledge of revelation than anybody else that has been given. And yet, this man is now being told, alayhi salam, that he's going to go learn. And, he, and by the way, his followers, what are they called? They're called people of the book meaning people of learning. The people who, who take his religion, and they, even though they've made changes to it, they're called ahbar, people of ink. In other words, this is the messenger alayhi salam who inspired so much learning and so much knowledge that came after him. They were, his people became known as the people of knowledge and the people of information and the people of the book. In any case, he's going to learn something that requires an extra effort on his part. Even if it takes him lifetimes, there's something unique and valuable about these lessons that even the book of Allah at the time is not going to teach him. He has to learn this from somewhere else. Even the Torah doesn't have this answer. And Allah won't just give it to him. He won't just reveal it to him. Allah says in the Quran, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمَ Allah used to speak to Musa alayhi salam directly, in, in direct communication, and engage with him in, in a very rigorous communication. And yet, Allah says, no, this is not the kind of learning that even Allah will teach you directly. You're going to have to go on a journey. So it is a very unique circumstance. You don't just pass over this little bit of information. You have to appreciate what's going on here. The most knowledgeable person in the world at the time is now being told, you have to go learn a lesson from somewhere else. And so he goes on this, what seems like an endless journey. Who is this person that he's going to learn from? What, what, is, what are his credentials? I mean, if Musa is going to, the most mentioned prophet in the Quran, is going to, be going to become a student of someone, we must really learn his name and acknowledge him. So now when we get to that, Allah Azza wa Jal, all he says is, فَوَجَدَ عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا they found us one of our servants. Literally, the Quran describes this teacher of Musa alayhi salam as one of our servants. I know that in our narrations and some of the opinions, we find his name to be Khadir or Khidr, it's pronounced differently. Quran deliberately does not mention his name. You would think this is a very important individual, and there's even an argument whether he's human or angel. Not a, it's not an issue in the Quran. The Quran didn't ask that question, we don't have to ask that question. The Qur'an gave us one bit of information about him. He was one of our slaves. What does that do? That actually teaches us something profound about those who reach the heights of knowledge. 
they are nothing more than a slave of Allah. Their titles, their credentials are insignificant before Allah. He's a mysterious figure that Musa alayhi salam just knows this is the person I have to learn from. And it's really interesting also, Musa alayhi salam does not ask him his credentials and say, so I'm supposed to learn from you? I mean, where did you graduate from? What revelation do you get? Well, who are you supposed to be? Like, you know, when you're learning from someone, you want to kind of size them up. There's nothing like it. He's, Musa alayhi salam straight up goes to him and says, هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِي مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْتَ May I follow you? Can I follow? And he didn't say, هَلْ تُعَلِّمُنِي Could you just teach me? I came all this way, because apparently you know some things I don't know. So why don't you just tell me, I'm, I'm already tired. لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبَ Quran also describes Musa alayhi salam on this journey, we've been pretty exhausted. Mind you, this is the same Musa alayhi salam who's crossed the water, who's been in the desert, who's done quite a few pretty ex exhaustive things, who's been in muddy and almost dying of dehydration to find water. This is the same Musa that went on this journey and says, I'm pretty exhausted by now. And after this exhaustion, he doesn't just say, can we just sit down here and learn now? Because it's been a pretty tough journey for me. He says to this individual, this Abd bin Ibadillah, he says to him, Hal attabi'uka? Can I follow you? This is interesting because it's what he's going to learn isn't just words. He has to follow him. This is a kind of learning that will come from experience. It's not, it's not book knowledge. It's not classroom knowledge. It's experience knowledge. And this is something Musa salam already knows. This person will teach me something that cannot come from books or words. He's going to show me certain experiences. So he's asking permission to follow him and only by living those experiences will I learn something. And of course, his response is, You're, you don't have the patience for it. لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعْيَ صَبْرَ I don't see you as capable of uh, withstanding what's going to be coming. I don't see that you have the grit, the perseverance, the patience it takes to learn these lessons. And Musa salam then convinces him. And by the way, Musa salam could have also said, uh, excuse me, I don't have patience. You know who I deal with? I dealt with Fir'aun. I debated with him. You know whose leader I am? Banu Israel. I don't have patience? You know what the kinds of things they've said to me? <laughs> he doesn't say that. Clearly, Musa alayhi salam, you and I know, his patience has been tested throughout his life. Throughout his life, time and time again, his patience has been tested. And yet, these lessons, his teacher is telling him, they're not that easy. It's going to test your patience. You're going to lose it. You're not going to be able to withhold it. That's a pretty, pretty powerful statement to make. And for Quran to record it like that about Musa alayhi salam. And he says, Satajiduni insha'Allahu sabiran. You'll find me patient. Insha'Allah, if Allah wills, I'm not saying that I have that capability, but if Allah grants me that capability, I will demonstrate patience to you. Okay, so that's his prerequisite for this learning. This is important for us because we learn, before we learn anything about these lessons, what we have to internalize is that these lessons cannot be learned if you're not patient. And these lessons will only be learned if your and my patience is tested, if we're put in difficult circumstances. These lessons are directly related to difficulty and hardship, where your patience and your grit is going to be put to the test. So this is what Musa alayhi salam is being told. And of course, Musa alayhi salam has seen difficulty before. This is not new for him. So he's pretty confident he'll be able to manage the situation. So they go on their way. And instead of me going ayah by ayah, I'll just share some highlights with you. The first stop on their journey is that they ask this, this teacher of his and Musa alayhi salam, they board onto a ship. Now when they board onto a ship, obviously there are people, they're travelers, and they ask these people, can we ride with you? So they've done them a favor. The circumstance is not just about a ship, I have to, you have to understand, now we have a situation where there are people who did other people a favor. The people that own the ship have done Musa and his teacher a favor by allowing them to ride along with them. They go on this ride, kharaqaha, he starts going, you can imagine, goes to the, 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 the bottom of the ship and starts ripping out the planks and damaging the ship, it's now starting to sink from inside. And Musa sounds like, أَخَرَقْتَهَا لِدُغْرِقَ أَهْلَهَا Have you just damaged this boat so you can drown the people that are on it? What are you doing? What an unheard of thing you're doing. لَقَدْ جِئْتَ شَيْئًا إِمْرَى What a terrible thing you're up to. How could you do this? And the teacher turns to him and says, أَلَمَ قُلْ لِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ الصَّبْرَ Didn't I tell you, you're not gonna, you don't have the patience for this. You can't learn these lessons. And he says, okay, لا تُؤَخِذْنِي بِمَا نَسِيتْ وَلَا تُرْهِقْنِي مِنْ أَمْرِ عُسْرَةِ Okay, okay, don't, 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 hold, don't hold me to this. Don't 
penalize me for this mistake and don't make this hard for me. Fine, fine, fine. You just do what you do. But before we go any further, I want you to appreciate something. There are people that are going to be in your life and mine that you might be doing something good to. You did something good to them and they do something terrible to you. And you're standing there, what? How, why would you do this to me? Or you're a bystander watching, like Musa is a bystander watching. They did something good for us, why are you hurting them? The last person you should be hurting is the one who did good to you. You know, like the po poet says, وَعَلِّمُهُ الرِّمَايَةَ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ فَلَمَّا اسْتَدَّ سَاعِدُهُ رَمَانِ I taught him how to do archery every day and when his shot got really good, he shot me. You know, <laughs> that's, th that, this idea is so weird. I was helping you. I did so much for you. How could you turn around and do this to me? This is what Musa is shocked about. Anyway, this is the first lesson. They go on. He doesn't know what the lesson is yet. He's still got questions in his head. Why did this happen? You don't have the patience. Let's keep going. Time for lesson number two. And they go on to lesson number two and they see this kid. They don't know who this child is. And he just kills the kid. This man kills a child. This child has done nothing to you. He's committed no crime. You don't, they don't even know him. Musa alayhi salam is in absolute shock. By the way, this is the kind of person, Musa alayhi salam is the kind of individual that when a person was being beat up, he intervened. You remember earlier on his, in his life, somebody was being beat up and he, he intervened and said, you know, Rajulaini yaqtatilan. And he went up and he just, he, he punched the guy, stopped it from happening. Now he's seen a child be killed. The shock and anger and frustration of Musa alayhi salam, aqtalta nafsan zakiyatan bi ghayri nafs? Are you serious? Have you killed a pure, innocent soul without it having, or this child having committed any crime? What kind of unheard evil have you just committed? nukra. And the teacher turns to him again with this corpse of a child in front of him and says, Didn't I say to you, you're not gonna have the patience for this. You can't handle this. Okay, he said, fine, if, if I ask you anything else, then okay, you don't have to accompany me. I got it. Okay. From my end, I have no excuse. You, you have every reason to leave me. If I, if, I, if, I do, if I cross the line one more time, I've been disqualified. Now we've got two circumstances so far. One in which people did good to them, and apparently they did bad back. In the other, nobody did anything to you. They... You have nothing to do with this one. Why would you harm them? Why would you do something to them? And this is also something unfathomable for Musa alayhi salam. And then you get to the third circumstance. And they, فَوَجَدَا جِدَارًا يُرِيدُ وَنْ يَنْقَضَّ فَأَقَامَهُ They went to some town. And فَأَبَوْا أَيْ You know, يُضَيِّفُهُمْ they, they refused, the people refused to be hospitable to them in the least bit. Hey, do you know where the well is? Maybe we drink the water. Shut the door in their face. Pushing them around. Nobody's offering them any help. You know? And they, they're not, they're clearly not welcome where they are. Abu is, you know, I, I don't know, as a kid I watched a lot of Western flicks. When you, a guy walks into a salon and everybody kind of, somebody's chewing on a straw just staring at him like, there's about to be a gunfight or something. Like, they're not, they're known, they're not welcome here. You know, what you doing here, stranger? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So when that happens, and they're not welcome, they're walking by and they see this monument type wall that's broken down and it's tipping over, Yuridu an yang qabba. It looks like it's going to tip over and damage the whole street. And his teacher says, yeah, we're going to work on this wall. We're going to fix this whole wall in the middle of town. People are cursing at them. People don't care for them. People are clearly letting them know, you better leave here. You better get out of here. And they're fixing the street in the middle. They're fixing this wall in the middle. And Musa Ali sounds like, these people are terrible to us. And they won't even give us so much as a sip of water. We've been working and laboring here all day building this wall. If you wanted, you could have been paid for this work at least. Maybe we would have gotten a, a, a couple of dollars here and there and maybe we would have eaten something. But that much, and he says, this is it. This is the time you and I part. It's interesting, the story began where two oceans meet and it, it's ending where they part. You know, these two are now parting. And in a sense, they're all both also oceans of knowledge. Musa is the ocean of knowledge of revelation. And this teacher of his is the knowledge of this other kind of knowledge that doesn't come from books. But now they're parting. And so now he tells him the reasoning behind all three of these. There was a greater plan from Allah. And in this plan, 
those people whose ship was destroyed, actually their ship was about to be seized by the navy. The king was taking every ship to add to his navy. When they came by their ship, they saw the ship is damaged. They said, no good for the navy. They let it go. They're going to suffer damages. They're going to have to fix it up. But at least they still get to keep their, their, their livelihood. They can still earn a living. In the case of the child only, Allah could have known that down the road in the future, this child was going to be a criminal, tyrannical to his parents. And Allah gave that child an outlet to Jannah and Allah allowed his parents also relief of great calamity that was coming their way. Nobody could have known that except Allah. In the case of this wall, Allah was looking out for two orphans in that town that was so mean to them, whose father left a great deal of money behind and that money was buried under that wall. If that wall tipped over, people would have seen that treasure. They would have, the kind of people they are, we, we know what kind of people they are, those kids wouldn't have seen a penny of it. That wouldn't have been eaten up by somebody else. And Allah wanted that those kids grow up one day and are strong enough and to, to protect their assets and then they dig up what is theirs. This was Allah's plan. But in all of this, none of this makes any logical sense. I mean, unless you know Allah's plan, you're not going to know the logic behind something terrible that happens. What I'm getting at is sometimes you're going to do good for people and you're not going to get compensated like that wall. Sometimes people are going to do terrible things to you. You haven't done anything to them. Sometimes you've done good for them and they only do horrible things to you or somebody else. You see these, are, these things around you. And when this happens, your patience is going to be tested. How can they get away with this? How can they do this to me? Why, why would they do this? I want to give you one more place in the Qur'an which is also in a sense related to the people of Musa salam in Surah Al-Isra. Very interesting language. You know, the Israelites when they were established and when they, when they finally became an independent nation, eventually Allah Azza wa Jal actually in, in the history of the Jews, in the history of the Israelites, they were ransacked and invaded by foreign nations multiple times. And Allah mentions two major, major invasions in Surah Al-Isra. But the way He mentions it, understand that the Israelites the Jewish community of the time, we consider them the Muslims of that time. You have to understand what that means. They were the Muslims of that time. That was the Ummah. And they lived in a town and then non-Muslims came, non-believers came and invaded them. فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ They broke into every home. You don't have to go further when you describe soldiers breaking inside homes. Then you know what happens next. That doesn't have to be spelled out. Everybody can know. Anybody who understands war knows. When militaries go into civilian towns, all unnamed kinds of atrocities take place. But that army that came in, you know what Allah called them? He says, We appointed over you, meaning we sent to invade over you servants of ours. The strangest phrase. Those people were disbelievers, enemies of Allah, pagans, attacking Muslims. And what did Allah call them? His servants. Sometimes people do, that do terrible, terrible things, they don't even know that they're serving a larger plan from Allah. They don't even know it. They don't even know that even in their rebellion against Allah, they are actually at Allah's service. They don't even know. The believers might not understand why this is happening to them. They don't see the future script. They don't have that curtain lifted from Allah, like in the case of the teacher of Musa, who said, look, this is gonna test your patience because you don't know what's behind the scenes. All you see is what's happening in front of you. You don't know what's going on you know, uh, in the background. That is only, this is Alimul Ghaybi wa Shahada. Allah knows the unseen and the seen. We only get to see what's in front. And when, it, when we see what's in front, we go crazy. We lose patience. We say, how can they do this? How did Allah let this happen? You know that parent, those parents who lost their child are not going to say, oh yeah, I guess he was going to get older and be a big pain. They're not going to say that. They're going to say, how did Allah let this happen? Why did my child have to die? And those same parents, if that child lived 20 years later, I wish you died when you were young. The kind of pain you've caused us. Those same parents will say those words. But Allah knew. Allah, they don't know. Wallahu ya'lamu antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows and you don't know. Allah, Allah has knowledge and you don't have knowledge. This is the kind of lesson that Musa alayhi salam could not just have been told. He had to experience it. Why? Because you can read about patience. You can learn about it, you can listen to a khutbah about it. But if you're experiencing something, you're experiencing a kind of situation where you cannot understand why this is happening to you. Why is this happening to me? And then still know, لا تحسبوه شر لكم بل هو خير لكم Don't think this is a bad thing for you, there's good in this for you. 
there's good in it for you. If you can internalize that, then you've learned one of the most important lessons in the Quran. One of those lessons that could not have been learned easily even by the likes of Musa salam. And if it's not easy for you and me to internalize that lesson right away, that's okay. It wasn't even easy for Musa salam. We're not being expected to turn into angels. We're not being expected to not be frustrated, to not be angry, to not lose patience. That's not the expectation from Allah. As a matter of fact, even someone of that status, of Musa salam, from, from Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, if he can multiple times be told, look, you're losing your patience, told you you're not going to be able to handle it, then who are we? We are going to go through those circumstances. But this story and these, this, this guidance is going to remind us that we have to take a step back sometimes and just look at Allah's plan and say, I submit to it. There is something good in it, in this life and in the next. And you know what? I'm going to accept that. And this is the lesson that Musa salam had to be given. We are not going to have someone like, you know, Musa's teacher who will walk around with us and when something bad happens, he'll be like, by the way, I know you're frustrated, but you know the real thing, you know you lost your job right now and you're really upset, but actually a much better job is coming and you would never have even applied for it if this didn't happen and you're going to move to the town you always wanted to move to. But that, that's all planned out for you, but I, I just didn't want to tell you that. So I, right now I know you're pretty depressed because you don't have any savings, you don't have money to pay the rent and the electricity bill and everything's falling apart, but just wanted to let you know there's something in the source code you didn't understand. Uh, that's not going to happen with us. That's not going to happen. That's, that's only with that messenger and that lesson that he had to learn. And through that we know that there's always a plan. Because of this story, we know there's always a plan. And the plan of Allah is always, always meant, meant to be something good. You know that knowledge that this man had, or this individual had, I'd say, be, to be careful? How did Allah describe his knowledge? He says, آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمَا he says about this individual, Allah gave him a mercy that comes especially from us. And then secondarily, he says, we gave him a knowledge that comes especially from us. In other words, that knowledge that he has, before it is even knowledge, it is a mercy. Before it's even knowledge, it is a mercy from Allah. That was important to mention because everything he did didn't look like mercy. It didn't look like mercy. Not from the naked eye, not from the eyes of the seen, but from the eyes of the unseen, there is mercy in that.